the male in modern society. The route from Beowulf to Pajama Boy has been a very long downhill slide. Popular culture has always shaped our standards and expectations, then as well as now. Pajama Boy, a term recently applied to the famous photo of an employee of Organizing for Action, a political advocacy group which supported Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, is the current archetype of a new style of male. The government approved, popular culture validated male. Perhaps best defined by a New York Times article back in 2015 featured a list of 27 ways to be a modern man. You can Google that. From wastefulness, uh, the modern man checks the status of his Irish spring bar before jumping in for a wash. To small, it gets swapped out. To silliness, does the modern man have a melon baller? Well, what do you think? How else would the cantaloupe, watermelon, and honeydew he serves be so uniformly shaped? To the assumption, of course, that he lives in the city, specifically the city of Brooklyn, the modern man has no use for a gun. He doesn't own one, and he never will. To the relaxation of expectations. The modern man cries. He cries often. The modern male identity situation, uh, as you can see, has deteriorated into ambiguity. Physical strength has long been the purview of that which is regarded as masculine. Pajama Boy is the embodiment of the absence of physical strength and thereby the supplantation of the concept of physical masculinity. Now, some have rebelled against this situation in their own way. In his 2014 piece in Time magazine, Denver Nix defines the term lumbersexual to describe this recent trend. He quotes, my lumber sexuality is, in part, a response to the easing of gender identities in society at large over the last few decades. The Urban Dictionary was more concise in 2010, defining the term as, quote, a metrosexual who has the need to hold on to some outdoor-based ruggedness thus opting to keep a finely trimmed beard. Yes, friends, growing a beard is easier than getting and staying strong. There are other approaches. There are individuals who have applied a different set of standards to physical efforts to remain masculine. Some are primarily concerned with abs, over facial hair. All seem to be concerned primarily with appearance. Some have focused on abs as opposed to a finely trimmed beard. And physical activity performed for the purpose of conforming to a preordained aesthetic standard is a version of the lumber sexual mindset. Abs boy looks the way he does because he thinks he's supposed to look that way. He won't gain useful weight. He won't get big and strong because he is afraid that it will obscure his abs. Now, I have previously extolled the, version, the virtues of strength training all over the place, right? Strength facilitates your ability to get things accomplished within your physical existence. It defines your relationship with your external environment. It's good to be strong, whether you're a man 
or a woman because your strength is intimately associated with your health and longevity and ultimately your physical independence. A strong man gets strong through his own hard work, determination, and persistence. A strong man looks good accidentally as a function of what he does for strength. He has consulted no magazine or website for guidance about his ideal appearance. The benefits of having planned and executed his own strength improvement transcend the physical. He's not only stronger, he's better in most other ways as well. Strength training is not popular right now. And our man has not settled into the role popular culture and its promoters in media and government have prepared for him. He's gone through the process of starting at the beginning and working toward a goal he set for himself with no help from anyone else other than the information they may have provided. His efforts are not sanctioned by any outside entity. They remain unimproved by network television and the New York Times, and the results go completely unappreciated by the vast majority of the population. A tan, abs, hideously expensive yoga pants, coffee made by other people, meticulously trimmed beard, the politically correct demeanor, all these are affectations designed to improve your stock with other people. They lack intrinsic value, since any value they impart to you has been assigned externally. People who depend on value assigned to them by others are obviously in a perpetually vulnerable position. They are fragile in more than a physical sense. Our strong man doesn't care about any of that because he is concerned with rational analysis and the consequences of his actions for himself and his family. He remains unaffected by irrelevant cultural and social influences. He is independent of fad and fashion. He understands the accumulated effects of the pursuit of the male role in human society the costs and benefits of having done so, and the relationship of physical strength to the male archetype. Strength is his infrastructure and his engineering. Strength is the ability to act, and its physical acquisition teaches the process throughout a man's existence. So, our man trains for strength. You should, too.